Hello, welcome to Pop Along RC, the RC car channel dedicated to RC car racing. I don't know what you're thinking. You can't race a grasshopper. Well, um, I plan to race a grasshopper. In fact, not long from now, I will be heading off to Blackpool for the Charged RC um, Mega RC Weekend. And one of the classes they're running is the grasshopper. So, um, I thought what I'd do is I'd see how quickly I could build one of these. Okay, so a few other little bits that I um, have ready for this build. We have got a couple of Tammy screwdrivers. Um, I used to try and do it with a Phillips screwdriver, but um, the Tamiya screwdrivers and the Tamiya screws are JIS. So if you can get a JIS screwdriver, it's much easier to use. So I've got the small and the large, maybe the medium and large. Uh, in the manual, it says you need some pliers. Um, I think you need those when you're doing the shocks. And I've also got here some cutters. So this is for cutting plastic off of the sprues. So, um, let's get the manual out and let's get started. Let's get this build underway. So, um, I was just looking through these instructions actually and I had, I had one of those moments. I've never realized all these little letters where it says BA5, BA5, BC1. I didn't realize the B stands for bag. So a BA is bag A. And it's a, it's a number four out of that bag. Because I was just looking at it, I was thinking, what is a BD, which is a BD3, which is this one here? It comes out of bag D. So if I grab bag D, there it is. So, I've just learnt something new. Anyway, what do I need to start? Let's start off with one of these. Uh, looks like I need the large bevel gear that goes on there. Pull that in. And then we need the grease. I'm just going to open this up. Put a little bit of grease on here. We need to add the BD thing that we were talking about before. Um, and then we're going on to bearings. I've ordered up some proper bearings, so I'm not running with the plastic bearings that come in the kit. So if you have got cutters, it does make um, taking these apart so much easier. Um, and you get a nice clear line. RC cars are a pleasure to build when you have the right tools for the job. So bearing goes in there, like so. Um, and then we need a bearing in the end there as well, like so. And then this slides in there, like so. Awesome. We've got this part here, so we need to put the small bearing in. So there's one small bearing um, in the set, and then the rest of the bearings are bigger. So there's one small bearing goes in there, like so. And we need a bigger bearing in the back. So I need bag B, and look for a rod. Oh, so much easier this way around. So. Uh, what I normally do when I do this is I get all the bags and I pour them into a Tupperware container and I don't really think about where all the parts are. Whereas doing it this way actually does make quite a big difference. And that goes on top. So that space that we put in the first time means that the spur gear, which is this one, sits behind that nicely spaced. So I'm actually really looking forward to heading off to the Charged RC event. As I say, I am booked in to race uh, a grasshopper um, and I'd planned to get one a while back and it just never happened. So kind of a little bit late to the party really with uh, this project. Nothing like leaving it to the last minute. I'm not sure if they've got a concourse competition 
running at the event. Um, if they are, it might be worth me um, painting up the shell properly. But as I say, pop it in the comments down below. Do you want me to do a proper Carl special job on the paint job? Maybe a bit of rust. Um, okay, and then we have got these gears here. Um, just got to make sure you put them the right way around. So we're going to feed those in like so, and then that should fit in there. Next one. Here we go. As far as diffs go, this is uh, quite a straightforward build. But yeah, going back to racing um, this car, I have no idea, no idea how it's going to perform because I don't think I've ever actually driven a grasshopper. Obviously, if you're a regular to the channel, you would have seen me racing my Tamiya Hotshot. Um, it is a re-release. I've got that in order to, sorry, I've got that in order to go to the Iconic Cup. Right, so where's the grease gone? In there. Meets up with the gear perfectly. And then this one oh, goes in there like so. Awesome. Okay, so just double checking that, that I haven't missed any other parts out. Nope, all looking good. So as I was saying, um, if you've seen on the channel, I ran my hot shot at the Iconic Cup um, a couple of years ago now. And then the following year, I got myself a super hot shot, which I ran at the Iconic Cup. Um, and that was also great fun. Um, and then one of the biggest competitions that here at Popalong we get involved with is something called the Iconic Cup. And that's the Tamiya racing that we do. And that's on road. So I've run a Tamiya TTO1. Um, I've run Tamiya MO3, Tamiya MO5. And then club racing I'll run a Tamiya MO7. I also do my Tamiya truck racing. And then recently, um, we had a bit of fun down at the Mill End track where we raced the Tamiya um, lunch boxes in a big wheeler race. And that was absolutely fantastic. That was super fun to uh, be involved with. Um, and I'm hoping that this grasshopper race is gonna be much the same interesting so we have got our motor mount here uh we've got our tiny tiny little motor there with uh, the pinion bolted on the end and then what we need in bag a is a couple of screws and a couple of bolts so on the back of the motor mount there are two holes to put the bolts so that's so we can get the motor mount in situ and then put the motor in and it holds those in place so i've never really done a build video like this where i'll just keep the camera rolling and uh, build away so if it's something you want us to do more of on the channel again pop it in the comments down below i would do this as like a little live gig however last time we tried a live uh, my house we realized that the um the wi-fi is just not quite strong enough from where we set the studio up so we're looking at other options because mark and i would very much like to do some more lives however the uh live was dropping out a little bit last time and we weren't happy with the quality of the uh video so um that's why we haven't done another live, but we are looking into our options. Um, I think some of you guys have been enjoying us talking and waffling and having our studio chats, um, where others have been politely said, just get back to the racing lads. And I get it, we're trying to, we're trying to do a little bit of everything. We're trying to mix it up a little bit so the content doesn't become 
sort of too samey. Lovely. What I do like about Tamiya cars and uh, Tamiya kits, sorry, is these motor mounts allow you to mesh the uh, gearing up perfectly. So it all just puts everything where it needs to be and no exception with this example, perfectly meshed. We shall see, there's one in. I can't actually remember what I was talking about earlier. I think I might have been talking about um, the different Tamiya cars that I've run. Which one's been the most fun? Well, obviously the, the big wheel race was hilarious. Um, but I do enjoy running my Tamiya trucks, if I'm honest. So it looks like this one pushes in there like so. And then we have that goes in there like so. Ah, oh, I see. Um, and then we've got to try and squeeze this one in on this side. You have to push them both in at the same time. Might work a little bit better. So let's push that there. And push them both in. Perfect. Um, now, if I was building a car like a proper race kit where there's hundreds and hundreds of screws involved. I have just started opting for using a uh, power tool as opposed to just a screwdriver like I'm doing today. Now I've not done much research on the grasshopper but there might be a follow up video if there are hop ups available for these cars I might look into getting a few and uh, hopping up this little car there really isn't much to this car obviously I've not done a lot of it yet but it does seem to be coming together quite nicely and these are the same screws so far it has been quite straightforward with regards to the screws you use because they've all been the same so while I'm carrying on with this, what car should I get next? Um, I've mentioned it on the channel quite a bit of late that I do really like the look of some of the the vintage re-releases that are out and about at the moment. And it's important not to over tighten screws uh, when you're screwing into plastic because it's very easy to strip the thread and you find that the screw just keeps on spinning. Um, okay, so this part is where we need to get our pliers out, I think. Oh no, you can use a screw to do it, perfect. Um, really interesting design with these shocks. So um, there's no oil in them. They are pretty simple in terms of design. I'm guessing the rear coil springs are the wider ones, so I am going to go with those, like so, is that right, looks like it, so got a couple of A1s, like so, may have made a little bit of a mistake cutting that one, but shouldn't have an impact, so then that goes in there, and then what we need to do is take our screwdriver, Hopefully it fits down the middle. Yeah, you can you can just about feel it pinch as it gets to the end. So they should be about the same length. This one could do with maybe a couple more turns just to tiny up a touch. There we go. So looking at those now, they are uh, the same length there. Awesome. It's a little bit fiddly, but what have I just done? Yeah, you don't want to lose that. You need that in there. So, a little bit fiddly this bit. Let's get it all lined up and start screwing it in. So, obviously, with my um, lunchbox video I did, I did not keep that car 
box stock for its first race. Um, I did go full Monty on the upgrades. I've got all the fast tracks, blue alley hop ups on that car. Looks absolutely fantastic. And um, that extra weight in it, I think it helped it with the, the way it drove on the track. What let me down on the day really is the fact that um, I think some of the other guys were running quicker motors than I was, so I just wasn't quite on the pace, um, but had an absolutely fantastic time. Mark has since got himself a lunchbox so that we can, well, one, hopefully race each other, but um, we also got our gifted shell, which... Uh, the guys at Millen got us so that hopefully we'll get a little run out with the other car we're gonna stick the bronze part in there let me pull that down put it back in excellent then the screw goes in and then the A5 screws it on from that side Perfect, so I need one of those. So looking at the time there, you can see hopefully it is 9.30. Now I've probably lost 10 minutes um, with getting memory card and battery, um, which means I'm about 40 minutes into the build at this stage. What I'm gonna do is I am going to take a break, um, try and sort out a battery that I can connect to this, and we'll carry on the build in a bit. All right, so as I said before, um, I have got uh, Tammy connectors here. I've got Dean's connectors to my battery. I've just connected this up to servo, so now the radio set. I've trimmed this up to zero. Let me just check. Um, sub trim as well should all be on zero perfect and perfect so I actually think I spent longer painting the shell and putting the tires together than I did building the rest of the car easily less than four hours all in I think which isn't too bad it's an afternoon if you've got everything ready uh, ready to go so the actual build of the car was really quite simple. Um, building the chassis up took about, I think it was under two hours to build up the chassis and that was fitting the servo, um, having all the electrics in the car ready to go. Then, the wheels. Now I need to talk to you about the wheels. The rear wheels, for example, um, I decided that I wanted to spray up the hubs because I wanted to have silver wheels on it. So what I did is I sprayed up all the hubs, which was fine, and then it came to putting the tires on the wheels. I think I spent about half an hour trying to get the hubs into the rear tires. Um, don't know why it was, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but putting the wheels inside the tires, yeah, I may have said a few, uh, few curses in the process. But the wheels aside, the rest of the build was really quite pleasant. And then it came to the uh, paint job and I wanted to go with box art, but I wanted to do it a little bit differently. So I went with this sort of weathered old um, look and I'm really pleased with how it's come out. Um, I actually got my daughter to lend a hand with painting some of the parts. So the scaffold roll cage that's in there has been painted up and weathered as well and the driver inside I've also done with as much detail as I could so aesthetically I think it looks ace a nice little project the Tamiya Grasshopper great car for beginners um, how's it going to perform on the track well let's find out shall we